Okay, hi, uh, this is a very quick video reply to King Crocodile. Uh, I am replying to a video that he made about the Big Bang. And apparently this video that video was a video reply to some other creations. Or whatever. So this is my video reply. Uh, the problem, uh, Mr. King Crocodile, is that you made a whole bunch of assertions that contradict science, that are inconsistent with scientific laws and scientific facts. For example, you said that once upon a time there was a singularity and the singularity expanded. Well, the problem is that singularities won't expand. According to every single model, every single mathematical model that has ever been proposed, singularities will remain as singularities. They won't expand. If scientists find a way to create an artificial singularity on error, the prediction and the expectation is that this singularity will remain as a singularity. No one will expect this singularity will expand. So, I mean, unless you 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 add additional energy to that singularity and create this expansion. But where did that additional energy came from? Did it came from nothing? Well, it's impossible according to natural laws, according to the first law of thermodynamics. So you believe by faith in some unknown mechanism that caused the expansion of the singularity. Amazing, very scientific. You also said that there was a period of inflation. So basically what you believe is that there was a period of expansion, then this expansion for some unknown reason bec became uh, faster, and then this fast expansion uh, ended and the universe went back to this slow rate of expansion or whatever. Okay, so what caused this inflation? Where did the energy that caused the inflation came from? Did it came from nothing? Well, that's not science. And what stopped this inflation? You need, once again, additional energy to stop this inflation. So, where did the energy came from? If it came from nothing, that's not science. You said in your video that matter came from energy. Well, yes, that's possible. I mean, natural mechanisms can create matter from energy. But the problem is that according to natural laws, according to scientific facts that have been proven and tested, if you create matter from energy, the same amount of antimatter has to be created. So, if what you're saying is true, we will expect to find the exact same amount of antimatter and matter, but we don't. We don't see any antimatter in the universe, except for a very, very small uh, fraction percent of antimatter. But basically, I mean, if what you're saying is true, then we will expect to find the same amount of antimatter, and we don't. So, that's wrong. I mean, that's not how it happened because. You can make predictions based on that assumption, and if it, that, those predictions are wrong, which they are, because there is no anti-matter, then they're wrong. You have to change your model. That's what an honest scientific theory is supposed to That's how scientific theories are supposed to work. I mean, if you make a prediction and this prediction is wrong, then it's wrong. You have to change it. But no, you will hold on to your model because you believe by faith in the Big Bang. You also said that energy was eternal. Well, that's impossible also according to the second law of thermodynamics. According to the second law of thermodynamics, after an eternal amount of time, I mean, according to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy increases as time passes. So, after an eternal amount of time, we will expect to find 100% entropy in the universe. Since the, since the entropy of the universe is not 100%, then an infinite or an eternal amount of time has not passed in the universe. Therefore, energy cannot be eternal. And guess what? Energy cannot be created either. According to the first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created. According to the second law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be eternal. So the only logical solution is that energy was created by a supernatural mechanism. That's poor logic. So, I mean, I'm not expecting uh, a reply, I mean, a point-by-point -point reply. I mean, I know that that will take uh, a long time because these are very complex topics. 
and you obviously have other projects, so you probably won't have the time. Uh, but I do have two questions that I would like you to answer. The first question is, given all these scientific contradictions for the Big Bang, don't you think you should be at least a little bit skeptic about the theory? I mean, you cannot blame creationists for not accepting the Big Bang after all these scientific inconsistencies that the Big Bang model predicts. I mean, your only solution is, I mean, either believing a God of the God, a God of the God's model, where God uh, magically intervenes every time uh, you have to break a natural law to create the universe, or believe that God created a fully formed universe, a fully mature universe. Those are the only two possible explanations. Of course, the God of the gaps uh, is not parsimonious, so I would rather to believe that God created a fully formed and fully mature universe. But, I mean, my question is, don't you think you should be at least a little bit skeptic about the Big Bang? I mean, when we say ditch the controversy, we mean ditch the evidence against the Big Bang. I mean, what's so wrong about that? I mean, why are you so against teaching the evidence against the Big Bang. I mean, do you really hold on to the Big Bang in the same way a, a Christian holds hold, hold on to, to his religion? So, you are no different from the religious people. I mean, you believe by faith in a whole bunch of stuff. And my second question is, what are you expecting for creationists? I mean, we already have pointed out all the scientific facts that contradict the Big Bang, all the scientific laws that contradict, that contradict the Big Bang, and your answer for everything is, well, nature did it, we don't know, but uh, an unknown natural mechanism did it. Well, if that's your answer for everything, then your model is not falsifiable. So what are you expecting for creationists? I mean, what can the creationists do to, to convince you that the Big Bang is wrong? Because apparently, it doesn't matter how many Plots, plots we find, it doesn't matter what evidence we show, you will always say, well, maybe an unknown natural mechanism did it. Then you are holding to an unfalsifiable model. My model is falsifiable. Intelligent design is falsifiable. All you have to do is prove that universes can be created naturally. If you prove that universes can be created naturally, I will drop creationism and become an Big Banist or whatever. I mean, if you prove that nature can create universes, then I will drop creationism. So my model is falsifiable. There is at least one potential thing that will convince me that creationism is wrong. So what will convince you that the Big Bang theory is wrong? What will convince you that the universe had supernatural intervention? Please, I mean, I honestly want an answer. So, uh, have a nice day, and I apologize if the quality of this video is not excellent. I simply don't have, I, I do not have enough time to make the edition of the thought. And, well, English is not my mother language, so if I made any mistakes, uh, my apologies for that. And have a nice day, and I am honestly waiting for an answer. I mean, I'm not expecting a point-by-point -point reply, but at least answer to my two questions. Uh, my first question is, don't you think you have to be at least a little bit skeptic about the Big Bang given all these scientific problems that your theory has? And my second question is, what does it take to falsify the Big Bang? I mean, what can a creationist do? What can a creationist present to falsify the Big Bang theory? Uh, so, uh, have a nice day and thank you very much.